Hi, welcome to this video on the Spartec SD1 rudder. We get the metalwork fitted to the ribs and we get the main assembly of the rudder put together with the ribs and skins and spar all being bonded into place. You will see two modifications in the flesh uh, in their final fitted position. These are not sanctioned by Spartec. Uh, these are my own modifications, which I do at my own risk. This is not an instructional video, and if you follow it or do any modifications to your own rudder, you do so at your own risk. Follow the instructions and do as they say. So, let's crack on and look at the video. To catch up where things are at the moment, the trailing edge uh, strip has been bonded in. This is all marked out, ready for uh, where the, the glue is going to go. I've changed my mind, I'm not going to varnish this until the ribs are in place, but I am going to varnish the insides of the spar here, the insides of all, all the ribs inside those areas, inside those areas there, because they're going to be all to get, get into once they're bonded on to the uh, skin to get to the upper sides and all the contact areas for where the uh, the metalwork fits will be uh, will be varnished on those i've already primed with etch primer the uh, hinge and horn bracket and the upper hinge bracket i put little marks on there my plan is the varnish is going to go through the holes uh, state that in the instructions once it's all dried uh, i'm going to make sure the rivets go through clean them out if necessary and then the uh, rivets will go in with some epoxy and a little bit of epoxy on these just to help out. One thing I did find was when I was actually looking at the uh, three thirty second rivets which go through to hold the uh, anchor nuts in place, that uh, some of, well actually the majority of them were countersunk and I only I had two which weren't. So. Uh, as I supplied excess, I had enough. I'm going to countersunk the holes here so that uh, the rivets will sit flush on the bottom skin, um, and I think that'll make it look a little bit uh, prettier, possibly, uh, uh, yeah, a bit more professional. I'm going to need just a little light sanding on the sides, it says in the instructions. I think that's just to make uh, sure that it's uh, going to sit properly um, and very slight they sort of the way they sort of fit it they don't quite go sort of show that they don't quite go fully along that trailing edge bit but that's minor I've uh, Gone along the trailing edge strip here and I've planed it and sanded it so that it's at an angle. Did a calculation, it's about four mil thick at this side, five mil that side, so that gives you an idea of the amount of taper that's required. Uh, that's confirmed by what's shown on the plan, by measuring on the plan, but also I actually did a calculation for the angles to, to make sure I got it right that way. So I double checked. Uh, so, no, that's a, I don't know if you can see that, but that, that was how I did my uh, my calculation and it should be 4.05. Well, I'm not gonna sand that, that accurately. That's the thickness of a human hair difference. So that's been done. Just waiting now for the varnish to dry and then the next stage will be to rivet those into position. I'm just going to put a little bit of resin. It doesn't say to do this, but I'm just going to put a little bit of resin on there.
think that will uh, that'll help things out just a little bit. At this point that helps to squeeze out the any excess resin which I put onto the horn. Sorry about the car going past with noisy exhaust. It's supplying the resin to the rivet. Good. Let's go through from the uh, heads on the wood side. My rivet pliers are not the best in the world. Put the head on the wood side uh, so that uh, it spreads the load better than the tail side. Um, we'll just crack on and carry on from there. So here we go, a little bit of time lapse. Sticking all the rivets in. So I've already done the uh, anchor nuts at this point. And so it's just this uh, hinge and the upper hinge to do. Okay, a little bit of resin there underneath the hinge. So let's get things put together. So I'm using uh, tape just to hold the leading edge in its relevant position, a small gap there, so that'll act as like a hinge. And uh, so I can actually lift up that spar into line with the skin. Just doing the uh, standard resin uh, prep on there, and then I'll use thickened resin uh, for the, the actual bond, which is what I'm putting on there. And I'll do that all the way through for the foam ribs and the other wooden ribs. Now the best method of holding everything together is to use masking tape just to put the tension into the right place. Thanks. So you'll see I've got two pots of resin. One is just pure resin and one's that uh, slightly thickened resin. using weights and clamps. The main weights there are just there to hold the whole skin dead flat. It's, it sort of tried to pant a little bit on the surface. So here I'm going through uh, doing the first foam rib. Getting rid of the excess, spreading it out a little bit on either side, just to make sure that uh, it wasn't quite happy there, not enough glue. Squeeze out just a little bit more, get the squeeze out, get rid of the excess. But I spread it out a little bit on each side, about uh, five or six mil out each side, just so when I do the varnishing, it's not right up against it. I'll tell you that about that later. I mean, I shall show you the uh, finished and cured product. Here I'm mixing up some extra resin because I found it's using up more resin than I anticipated on the foam ribs.
This is all you know, relatively straightforward, fitted nicely against the trailing edge, although as pointed out earlier, only sort of half the width of the rib was making uh, contact on the upper two and none of the uh, trailing edge of the lower rib was making uh, contact directly to that rear line. And yet we know the distances were correct by the way the wooden ribs were. So foam ribs just been sort of fabricated a touch shorter than I'd have really liked. I'd have preferred them to be right to the back and just have to sand them to a chamfer all the way along. But hey ho, it's no major thing. I just filled the gap up with a little bit of thickened resin. Here we go with the top rib, with the uh, hinge, and then the top capping rib goes on last. This goes past that trailing edge strip very slightly. That's sort of shown on the plan, it gives the extremity of the trailing edge of the skin. This is a, uh, what we've got. You can see where I've wiped out, maybe. I don't know if it shows on the camera, but there is a slight width to the uh, glue points on the hinges. Sorry, on the ribs. We've got hinges on the ribs, so uh, when I come to varnish, I don't have to get up overly close to the foam because the instructions will say don't get the varnish on the foam. A uh, little bit of sanding, I've cut the uh, excess off each end, so uh, there's a bit of excess there, and there's overhang here, I've cut that off <coughs> and sanded it. So all we've got to do now is varnish inside the bays, varnish the inside of the other skin, and then we're ready to uh, bond the second skin on, and by then hopefully we'll have a nice rigid uh, rudder. It's quite quite firm at the moment, but I'm really happy with uh, the additions I sort of said here. That does make that fit feel a lot stronger. And in there, where that little square section is, I think that improves the strength there no end. So here we go, time lapse for the other side. Applying the resin to the skin. pre-wet it so that the resin actually soaks into the wood a bit, make sure you get a good bond again on all the other bits. I had sanded uh, the, the foam ribs uh, with a long board to make sure they actually conformed with all the angles. It didn't really mention that in the instructions but uh, without doing that the skin sort of quilted a bit as it went over the top so I made sure it was flat right the way across. Now I'm just applying the thickened resin, made up enough this time. Took about 20 grams of resin. Tape to hold the skin in position. Board there to make sure the skin rates flat and then uh, just added weights to make sure it's being held down on the ribs and trailing edge. Adding some extra weights. Getting rid of the excess and there we go. Build time 9.5 hours. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.